Chelsea 2, Burnley 2, and it gets to a point where it's beyond funny with Chelsea, isn't it? I mean, the fact that it wasn't even a penalty, the player shouldn't have got sent off. Chelsea score, they go 1-0 up, and somehow against 10 men, they end up drawing the game 2-2. It's a farce, and they're at home as well. But time and time and time and time and time again, we see this with Chelsea. And look, I'd love to know what people think in the chat. Get in the comments. What is going wrong with Chelsea? Because for me... They've wasted a billion quid by not buying a top-class striker. They've had enough chances there. They've missed those chances. It's been the same story at Chelsea pretty much since Todd Bowley came in. This was the same when Potter was here. It was the same. Uh, it's been all the. It's been the same all season with Pochettino. There is an identity crisis. There is a confidence crisis. Uh, there is a lack of accountability. There's certainly a lack of consistency. You look at the top half of the table and you're saying, where's Chelsea? They're not even the, in the top 10. This late assault on the European spots is just simply not going to happen. They're not good enough. And this season is going to become next season for Chelsea, where it's all about getting back into Europe. How is it going to be sustainable? They're, they're going to be sh they're going to be hemorrhaging money as well. They're not going to get into Europe. Where's the urgency? I don't understand it. On that international break and when the players come back, you should have all together saying, look, the survival of this football club is dependent on qualifying for Europe. We've got Burnley at home. They're rubbish. Let's go and beat them and let's get a bit of momentum. momentum. And, and that they don't. There's no spark. There's no desire. There's no togetherness. Um, and it's been consistently like this all season. It's... It's incredible. And look, give Burnley their shout out. I mean, Rodriguez hits the bar in the last few minutes. They could have won 3-2. Um, they probably would have won that game with 11 players. So big, big shout out to Burnley. But Chelsea, it's remarkable. And I'm sure there'll be many people screaming and shouting Pochettino out. Um, I've seen certain Chelsea fans saying that. And I, I almost... Um, look, you do get to a point where a manager needs to go. But I've got to be honest, I don't see... Look, if Chelsea... If Chelsea bring Jose Mourinho in, you get the feel-good factor. But he's not a modern manager. He, like, he is a very limited manager in relation to the way the Premier League operates now. So maybe you get a little bit of a, a bounce. You know, he'd certainly sort you out defensively. But in a, in a very short period of time, it'll all go south. And then, you know, God knows what Mourinho would do with some of that money. And more mess could happen like it did at United and Spurs. So I don't think Mourinho is a long-term solution for Chelsea. The long-term solution and the major Chelsea problem is what they've done off the pitch. Um, I, I don't particularly rate Pochettino as a top-level coach, but I certainly don't necessarily think he's the problem at Chelsea at the moment. They have an abundance of players that don't work well together. And for whatever reason... They spent all that money and they didn't go and get a world-class striker. I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry, if you put Erling Haaland up front for Chelsea over the last 18 months, they wouldn't, wouldn't be where they are. They'd score a lot more goals. They do get into situations to score goals. They've just got not enough quality to score them. Um, yeah, I mean, look, whether Pochettino could get sacked, but for anybody who's screaming and shouting Pochettino out tonight, you're not understanding the major problem at Chelsea. It's not the manager. Um, and yeah, you might be able to bring a manager in that can bounce you a little bit, but you have enough quality players to be way better than you are. Where you are in the league is incredible, you know, and I agree that you've got to scrutinise the manager because of where you are in the league. But then it doesn't take that long to figure out that Chelsea's problems are not actually directly attributable to the manager. They're not. I don't think they are. I think they are. That It's more to do with what Todd Bowley's done since he came in and there's many advantage there's many examples of of owners who come in and bleed a club dry and mess it up you know the glazers you could say mike ashley at newcastle this is a new type of learning where the mat todd bowley's come in with with good intentions his heart's in the right place he wants to make chelsea great but it just shows you how money in the wrong hands can also be as damaging as people who you know want to bleed your club dry so to speak so yeah, Chelsea are in a mess because they spent stupid money on stupid players, really. I mean, that Mudrick doesn't look anywhere near good enough. There's plenty of others as well. Um, it doesn't fit. And um, there's no cohesion. Uh, there's no chemistry. And I, I, I know for a fact that the Chelsea, off behind the scenes, Chelsea is just not a football club. It's um, it's a sum of its parts. It's not. There's no unity there. Uh, so terrible result, terrible result for Chelsea. Uh, also, oh, well, I've got, I've also got to bring in the VAR. I mean, today has been a brilliant day for the Premier League on one hand. every I think we're averaging four goals per Premier League game, about 28 goals or something like that in six games. It's been brilliant. But then as great as this Premier League season has been, 
it's still underpinned by absolute incompetence when it comes to refereeing decisions. And nothing gets done about it. I think I think it's disgusting how it seems to get worse month on month, and yet the outrage has subsided and nobody really wants to talk about it. it the Premier League should be so much better, and it's getting so much worse. The integrity of the league is getting so much worse. Newcastle are now right behind West Ham in the race for European football, and West Ham have been completely and utterly robbed at Newcastle today. And Gordon gets sent off for a second yellow card that shouldn't happen. And then the penalty at Chelsea, um, the lad gets sent off and he shouldn't get sent off because it's not a penalty. And it simply comes down to VAR on both of them. The referee on the pitch makes a mistake, but VAR is reviewing the stuff that they, they're they not qualified to, re to review. When you look at what happens, Anthony Gordon puts his foot in front of Calvin Phillips, doesn't get the ball. So he's obstructing Calvin Phillips and then they give a foul on Calvin Phillips on Anthony Gordon. I mean, Anthony Gordon literally sticks his foot in front of uh, Phillips's kicking leg. There's no touch on the ball. He's literally putting his foot there to be kicked. It's, it, it's simulation. It's not a penalty. It becomes a penalty. Nonsense. Absolutely stupid decision. And then in the in the Chelsea game, I mean, there is contact of the arm on Mudrick. But if that was genuine contract, Mudrick would fall backwards. He goes forwards. It's, it, it's simulation again. And yet VAR is looking at something and going, that's a penalty. And can I just say as well, it needs to be said. So uh, putting your arm out on Mudrick is now a penalty. But kicking somebody in the chest off the ground in a title decider isn't a penalty. And I'm talking about Doku on McAllister. And what we'll probably get from Howard Webb and Michael Owen in a couple of weeks is... Well, look, his hands up. He's caught the player in the face. You can see the players could have been killed. It's got to be a penalty. And yet they talk about the Doku one on McAllister and it's like, it's subjective. It's either way. It's crap. It's absolute crap. And the integrity of the league is in the gutter because they keep making these ridiculously contradictory and stupid, stupid decisions. How can Doku kicking McAllister in the chest not be a penalty, but then the Burnley player can touch Mudrick, who dives forwards instead of backwards, and that is a penalty on review. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. And, you know, the Gordon one on Phillips is just incredible. And I'm not taking anything away from Newcastle or Chelsea for winning those penalties, but, you know, the officiating is absolutely shit. Let's be clear, it's absolutely terrible. But going back to Chelsea... You're 1-0 up from that penalty. You're at home. You're against Burnley, who are absolutely shocking. And from 1-0 up against 10 men at home to Burnley, you end up drawing 2-2. You've conceded twice from winning positions. It's unacceptable. And there is going to be a lot of questions asked. Get your comments in below. Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe. I'll speak to you on the next one. And I'll look forward to reading your comments because I'm sure there'll be plenty.